Chemical Atom Productions Incorporated is proud to present Trippy Shit. Excerpt from an essay, Oh Excellent Airbag, Humphrey Davy and Nitrous Oxide. The summer of 1799 saw a new fad take hold in one remarkable circle of British society, the inhalation of so-called laughing gas. The overseer and pioneer of these experiments was a young Humphrey Davy, future president of the Royal Society. Mike J explores how Davy's extreme and near-fatal regime of self-experimentation with the gas not only marked a new era in the history of science, but a turn toward the philosophical and literary romanticism of the century to come. On Boxing Day of 1799, the 20-year-old chemist Humphrey Davy, later to become Sir Humphrey, inventor of the miner's lamp, president of the Royal Society and domineering genius of British science, stripped to the waist, placed a thermometer under his armpit and stepped into a sealed box specially designed by the engineer James Watt for the inhalation of gases, into which he requested the physician Dr. Robert Kinglake to release 20 quarts of nitrous oxide every five minutes for as long as he could retain consciousness. While seated in the box, breathing deeply, Davy had felt the effects that had become familiar from his many previous experiments since he had first inhaled the gas earlier that year. The first signature was its curiously benign, sweet taste, followed by a gentle pressure in the head as he continued to inhale. Within 30 seconds, the sensation of soft, probing pressure had extended to his chest and the tips of his fingers and toes. This was accompanied by a vibrant burst of pleasure and a gradual change in the world around him. Objects became brighter, clearer, and the space in the cramped box seemed to expand and take on unfamiliar dimensions. Now, under the influence of the largest dose of nitrous oxide anyone had ever taken, these effects were intensified to levels he could not have imagined. His hearing became fantastically acute, allowing him to distinguish every sound in the room and seemingly from far beyond, a vast and distant hum, perhaps the vibration of the universe itself. In his field of vision, the objects around him were teasing themselves apart into shining packets of light and energy. He was rising effortlessly into new worlds whose existence he had never suspected. Somehow, the whole experience was irresistibly funny. He had a great disposition to laugh as all his senses competed to exercise their newfound freedom to its limit. Now the gas took Davy to a dimension he had not previously visited. Objects became dazzling in their intensity. Sounds were amplified into a cacophony that echoed through infinite space. And then suddenly he lost all connection with external things and entered a self enveloping realm of the senses. Words, images, and ideas traveled together in such a manner as to produce perceptions totally novel. He was no longer in the laboratory, but in a world of newly connected and modified ideas where he could theorize without limits and make new discoveries at will. After an eternity, he was brought back to Earth by the sensation of Dr. Kimmy removing the green tube from his mouth. The outside world seeped back into his semi delirious trunks, and as the energy returned to his limbs, he began to pace around the room. Yet, a part of him was still present in the dimension of mind that had swallowed him whole, and he struggled for the words to capture it. He stalked majestically towards Kinglake with the most intense and prophetic manner and attempted to shape the insight that had possessed him. Nothing exists but thoughts, he blurted. The world is composed of impressions, ideas, pleasures and pains. 
Davies Boxing Day Experiment was the culmination of a freewheeling program of consciousness expansion into which he had co-opted some of the most remarkable figures of his day. Within days of his first self-experiment in April, he had offered the gas to his friend Robert Southey, the future poet laureate, whose reaction was as if he said as Davies' own. The atmosphere of the highest of all possible heavens must be composed of this gas. Southey's ecstatic report to his brother Tom set the tone for the explorations that were to follow. Oh, Tom! Such a gas has Davy discovered. The gaseous oxide? Oh, Tom, I have had some. It made me laugh and tingle in every tone of fingertip. Davy has actually invented a new pleasure for which language has no name. Oh, Tom, I'm agreeing. For more this evening, it makes one strong and so happy. So gloriously happy. Oh, excellent. And I. Uh, 